setting in for me. What is? We're juniors, and soon we're going to be seniors. Yeah, we're growing up, but we shouldn't rush it. You're right, but still, it's like the 16. Let's go to JLo for 13 going on 30. I have so many assignments. I wish I was almost done with high school. Being a teenage girl is so hard. I wish I was athletic and socially relevant. Yeah, old show you did good last game. Oh my god, Nylon Brown! Nylon Brown! Oh my gosh, please, can I get an autograph? Big Ocho Brown, my glorious king. What's going on? Are they talking to me? Nylon Brown, please report to the counselor's office. The Big Ocho Brown. Come on, come on. Have a seat, have a seat. Wow, 14 offers. Have you committed yet? Um, yeah. My God. <laughs> uh, you have a nice day now. <laughs> what was that? I don't want to graduate yet. I'm not ready. I just want to be a teenage girl again. This is Christian, and today we're going to be talking about how seniors changed from being a freshman to a senior. Today we're here with Shamaya. How do you think you matured from being a freshman to a senior? Um, I feel like my mindset has changed a lot, and I don't really mess with a lot of people like I used to. What do you think is the biggest difference from being a freshman to a senior? The mentality. And today we're here with Bronco. How did you think you changed and matured from being a freshman to a senior? Really football, like people are around, teammates, mm -hmm. like football really make you a better man, so. Yeah. yeah, that's good. How did you think your environment has changed from being a freshman to a senior? Um, I adapt to the environment very well because I'm not shy, things like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm a quick person, so yeah. I made a lot of friends, things like mm -hmm. that. So it was very easy. And that is how some seniors have changed over the years at Ben Davis High School. Christian Otako, BD TV. Oh, hey, Hi, Eli. Oh, my God. Have you heard about Oakwood and Oak Girl breaking up? They were literally the it couple. Um, no, not really. Gossiping is like a bad habit. Like, since I've matured and stuff, I don't really care if you fuck the drama. You kind of right. Well, do you want to go out to eat later? Sure, we can. We can text my plans later. All right, I'll see you around. With college just around the corner, it's time to start thinking about the things you do and don't want in your college experience. So I got to talk to my sister, Devin Williams, about some of the pros and cons of being a student at Tennessee State University. Greetings, I am Devin Williams, a sophomore biology major at the Tennessee State University, and my experience here has been nothing short of great. It has its troubles with financial aid and Rutgers office and all of that, but no school is perfect. But I let the family feeling and the connections with other schools such as Meharry and Vanderbilt overthrow the troubles I face in financial aid office and records. They give out lots of scholarships, so I am so grateful for that. And yeah, HBC way or no way. <laughs> Man, hearing our upperclassmen talk about college has me looking towards our future. Yeah, but I'm still kind of missing my childhood. I don't think I'm ready to grow up yet. I understand. Let's go talk to Skylar about her childhood memories. Sometimes, when I miss my childhood, I like to look back at all the memories I made. And I'm so glad I have a bunch of them to remember. Without my childhood memories, I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today. Each memory, from the broken bones to the dance recitals, changed me for the better. Skylar Bledsoe, BD TV. As we grow up, we develop lots of traits of our own, such as style. Here are some of our BDTV crew style change. This was Key Sandifer, BDTV. Music was just there for the listening.
But as you get older, music has become a safe haven to escape our realities. I wonder how much have the students at BD's music has changed. Let's go see. When I was younger, I listened to like a lot of stuff that my dad listened to. We listened to like a lot of Drake and stuff like that. But now when I'm now that I'm older, I listen to like a lot of Tyler the Creator, Brent Fires, and stuff like that. Back then, I was listening to uh, Three Six Mafia. I was big on that because my stepdad had like old CDs. So Three Six Mafia, uh, The Weekend, Mixtape Weekend, Before Starboy, uh, Lil Neo. Stuff like that. That's what I was listening to versus. When I was younger, um, I used to listen to a lot of R&B, Drake. Uh, my mom used to play him a lot, Jay-Z, stuff like that. Uh, when I grew up, my dad, he started playing a lot of rap around me. Um, so I listened to a lot of Lil Baby, uh, people like that, more underground rap artists. I used to listen to a lot of things my mom would play. I didn't really have like a certain type of song that I would play like all the time. But when I got older, I just listened to a lot of people, like a lot of songs other people would play, and then it just got stuck in my head, and then I just kept playing it. But yeah. <sighs> Crazy how time passed. But those are some interesting answers, though. Cody Boosenbutt, BD TV. Tips and tricks on how to save money. Number one, track your spending, set up a budget, deposit at least one third of your money you earn into a savings for your future to help out for your success. Number two, stop spending money on fast foods, video games, and the latest shoes. If you don't need it, then it's a luxury and not a need. Jerome Temeskin, BDTV. Jerome, Jerome, thank you so much. Look, now I have money, I have a house, I have a car. Thank you so much. Thank you. Follow him, follow him. Woo! <laughs> hey, it's Zay. And since we're on the topic of saving money, another way to save money is by going thrifting. Come to the bins with me. Thrifting is a great way of saving money. I thrift for vintage clothes to sell and trade for items. I'm going to show you guys some footage that I got from this past Tuesday. These are some of the things that I got from thrifting. I get everything from sports gear to casual wear. I also have a business called Red Devil Vintage if you want to check out some things I provide for a good price. Zay Rogers, BD TV. Oh, hey Natalie. Hey. I like your outfit. Where'd you get it from? Oh, Zay put me on with a cool thrifted outfit since this is getting colder. How'd you know it was getting colder? Darren told me. Speaking of Darren, let's go on to him with the weather. Who am I here with? I'm Aria. I'm Josie. The colder. My name is Jada. London. Mari Sanders. Hey, Larry, the single ladies for me. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. If you wish you put a wing on it, if you wish you put a wing on it, don't be mad if she put a wing on it. If you... Doc myself. Elsa and Anna. Woody. Oh, uh, Woody. Bush. Well, that concludes high school versus preschoolers. I'm Julia Hughes, BDT. Think to it. I remember when I was that age. You're still caught up on that? No, I've actually been thinking about my future. I think I want to be a cheerleader. Um, maybe you should keep thinking about that. In the meantime, let's go to Nehemiah with coaches interviews. Hi, this is Nehemiah Dow, and as our football team progresses into the playoffs, let's interview Coach Mann about his playoff experiences as a player and as a coach. Uh, the uh, the player part. Uh, these are memories that will happen forever. Like I uh, remember specifically uh, my sophomore year, my junior year, my senior year of high school. These are things that uh, you'll remember the exits if you lose early. You'll remember the exits if you uh, lost the state championship. As a coach, those that show that they are nervous or scared, uh, there could be a direct reflection upon your players. So uh, if you uh, feel like you have done everything possible to prepare a football team, you shouldn't uh, feel the pressure then uh, in games, but obviously there are going to be moments that are tight, uh, and there are moments like uh, in the fourth quarter that you're down 25 to seven, and uh, uh, you don't really want to find yourself in that that very often. But um, pressure, like uh, this is what we have worked for, this is what you've trained for, this is what all this stuff that you do. This is what. So hopefully you aren't sitting out there panicking at all. The senior class has uh, put in a lot of time, not only uh, throughout their uh, uh, their whole high school career. But they spent a lot of time together, and since the end of last year, we have put in about 200 days together of football events, workouts, practices. Uh, feel pretty confident that uh, in the event that there's some adversity in the game, uh, this group of seniors will make sure that uh, uh, their previous relationships and what they have built, that they're going to make sure they uh, survive it. So, feel pretty good about that part. It's a special senior class.
Our football team played against Pike High School last Friday. Pike took a fat L losing 53-0, but hey, what's new? Mike Searcy led us in receiving yards with 146 yards. They are set to play Cathedral next at UND. Make sure you get there to show your support. The game starts at 7 p.m. Show up early to get a good seat. Girls basketball played against Hamilton Southeastern. They lost 50 to 72. Their next game is tomorrow against Brownsburg. The game is at Brownsburg and JV starts at 6 o'clock while Varsity follows at 7.30. Come out and show your support. Our boys basketball team finished trials this week. They have the purple versus white scrimmage at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Make sure you come out and show some support. Transitioning from your senior year of high school can bring a lot of stress and anxiety. Let's go ask a few seniors how they feel about this transition. So, what's your name? Keon. And how do you feel about um, transitioning from a senior in high school to being a freshman in college? I'm really ready for real because I want to experience new, thing, new things and like grow up. My name Opie. A little scared because I want to go to like a big college, so it's a lot of people, more people, so I'm scared. Kendall. I'm really excited. I'm ready to experience new things. I'm ready to explore my options. Um, and I want to go to a culinary school, so I feel like that's really going to be fun. Yeah. It's great to have a plan, but it's also okay to not know what you want to do just yet. Finding what makes you happy is what's important. Fill out your applications and take it day by day. Amaya Booker, BDTV. Hearing from the class of 25 has made me realize how high school has made us mature. You know what else is mature? Knowing what's going on in your community. Let's go on to Namarie with Community Calendar. As you all know, fall is here, and you may be wondering what's coming up. I'm Amari Robson, and I'm here to keep you updated on our weekly community calendar. We will be giving a special shout out to all the veterans. Veterans Day is on Saturday, November 11th. This day is used to honor all of those who served in the United States military. We have our Thanksgiving food drive through November 1st through the 15th. Our after school tutoring will be held on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Seniors, Herf and Jones will be here in the main lobby to take cap, gal, and graduation order. We would also like to shout out and recognize that this month is National American Heritage Month and National Family Caregivers Month. Thanks for tuning in to your weekly community calendar. I'm Mari Robinson, BD TV. Growing up then versus now has completely changed in more ways than one. Let's go talk to some parents and teachers about what has changed since they were a kid. Well, the whole dynamics of teaching has changed. Uh, we now uh, uh, have a more relaxed environment and uh, uh, everything is not so regimented like it was during the 1950s and all. Well, there's been many things that have changed since I was a kid growing up in the 90s. Um, 80s and 90s, but I'd say the biggest thing that's changed is technology. I would consider myself lucky. We, I had a big family and we didn't have a lot of money, but my parents made an effort to take us camping every summer and anything outside was fun. Something I would change about my teenage self would be doing better in school. Growing up for me was very family oriented. After hearing the interviews from my parents and teachers, it really helped me understand that maturing and growing up really does make you the person that you are today. Natalie Chandler, BD TV. Job interviews are inevitable. It's a part of life. Today we're going to be giving some tips to make sure you have a successful job interview. Why First, are we don't even going over this? Just an interview. There's nothing to it. There you are, and only 10 minutes late. You're lucky I had nothing else to do today. What? Such a resume on my desk. What, what resume? Huh? So, tell me about yourself, dear. 
I am. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm very reliable. I, uh, I have great social skills. I, um, I, I got first place in my school okay, choir competition. Okay, well, tell me what you're gonna provide to the company. I am. Um, I'm very hardworking, reliable. I'll be here consistently. Yeah, I heard that one before. But but it's true. <laughs> Growing up, it's a lot harder than I thought. Maturing, it's an important step in growing up, but to show others that you are, you need self-control. The first step is to save your money. You don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on random items you don't need. An important step in maturing is controlling what you say. I hate you. My third and final point is to become your own person and realize who you want to be. This is Cameron Grimes, BDTV. It's time. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Hey guys, it's PJ, and welcome to another episode of PJ Posted. Let's go. Are we starting? Yeah. Oh, what's up? Hello. Name and occupations. Go. Uh, Diego Salas and... Uh, uh, Stand still, man. Business owner. Hit the running man. Go. Okay, okay, okay. You got the new one, but do you know the old one? No. Boy, if you don't get... Name, occupation? Keon, friends, been neighbors football player. Cross and go. Name, occupation. Uh, dean assistant. Name. Oh, Mike Norris. Norris like Chuck. All right, you ready for this? Are you? You, you can do so. You, you do. Smarter than a fifth grader? Go ahead. All right, first question. A hexagon has how many sides? Five. Huh? Um, he's too grown to not be knowing how many sides, but name, occupation? Uh, doctor. Name? Uh, uh, a veterinarian. No, what's your name? Oh, <laughs> sorry. You're okay. Jaylee. Nice to meet you. How many sides does a hexagon have? Eight. Open your Chromebook. Excuse me. All right. Oh, or not. We did some. We did some research. How many sides does a hexagon have? Six. Good job. You're smarter than a fifth grader. Natalie, what are you doing? I'm taking your advice. I'm growing up. I think I've finally found something that clicks. Broadcasting? Yeah. Come on. Three, two, one. Mark, I'm Natalie Chandler. And I'm Maddox Hinton. BD TV. TV.